So here I'm on location um, at in Katoomba and we have the three sisters in our distance. And I want to use this opportunity to give you an idea of how you might use the histogram to better understand the exposure that you're taking. Now I chose this location simply because I happen to be in the area but also the fact that although it is grey it actually will help us to better understand the histogram. Now we have clouds that are grey and we have a foreground that is a little bit darker. And the idea is, is I'm going to take a series of three photos, one that is underexposed, one that is overexposed, and one that is correctly exposed. And I want us to look at those images and see how you differentiate them, but then more importantly, how the histogram tells you that information. So let me take a few photos. Okay, so now I've taken three photos, and now let's go have a look in the computer to see what those images look like. So let's look at the first image. In this image, it's pretty clear that it's underexposed. It's very dark. There are no whites. Even the brightest area isn't very bright at all. But let's have a look at the histogram. The histogram here shows that all the pixel information is to the left. So this dark region over here is represented by this large peak over here. The rest of it is represented by this peak and even the brightest section over here probably is accounted for in this section of the histogram. There's absolutely no pixel that is either white or even light grey. So it's clearly underexposed. And that's the indication of an underexposed photo. Your pixel information is very much to the left. Let's have a look at our second image. In this case, it's very washed out or overexposed. How do you know? Well, clearly there aren't any blacks really to speak of. When we look at the histogram, that's represented by the fact that there is no white at all in the left aspect of the histogram. There are no blacks whatsoever. However, there are a lot of pixels on the white and many are actually pushed right against the right of the histogram. In fact, there will be pixels here that would have had information, but because it's overexposed, they'd be completely blown out. And although you can fix an underexposed photo a little bit by boosting it in Photoshop or any other editing software, if it's blown like this, you cannot reduce the exposure to regain that information. So if anything, if you had a choice between underexposed or overexposed, you'd prefer an underexposed photo because at least you can bring some of the detail back. But if it's too overexposed and it's blown, then you lose that information. But really, neither are ideal. So let's have a look at our third image. In this case, you'll notice that the darkest pixels don't sit at the very edge. So we don't have any blacks, but clearly our information is in the dark regions is a little bit more towards the right. Similarly speaking, in our brightest section, it's not pure white, but clearly we have information close to the edge, but not butting up against the very right of the histogram. And in this case, the information is encompassed completely by the histogram. So this would be a better exposure. Now, obviously, if I wanted to edit this particular image, I would choose this particular image. Increasing the exposure of an underexposed photo would bring in some noise. Decreasing the exposure of an overexposed photo may reduce the overexposure factor, but I would have lost some information or some detail. But in this case, this is probably the best compromise. And so in my final image, I have a corrected version. And if you notice, what happens is that the dark peak over here has shifted a little bit towards the right. In other words, we've brightened up a little bit of the shadows and this peak moved a little bit towards the left, which means we reduced the actual highlights as well. And I'll turn it off and on again so that you can see what's going on. And so although this is not the best uh, image to, to use, uh, I certainly would have preferred some nicer clouds and a, a nice sunset or a sunrise, but you can clearly see that this final image is probably the best of the crop. 
Now, so hopefully what you can now see is that your idea is, is to take a photo that isn't too dark, that isn't too light, but sort of in the middle. That way you capture the information of the whole scene. Many photographers refer to shooting towards the right. And what that basically means is, is that you try to get the histogram to be in the middle to capture the full range of lighting that you have, but a little bit more shifted towards the light end. You see, if your photo is slightly underexposed, you can boost that in Photoshop or any other editing software. But boosting the darker areas in the computer will increase noise and artifacts. And that's something that you would like to limit, if at all possible. And so by shooting towards the right, you have the option to boost shadows, but you don't have to do a lot because most of the pixels are in the brighter end of the spectrum. Hopefully that will give you a better understanding of the histogram, and I'll see you next time.